Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this Talk of the Town, which is an update from one of our favorite institutions in town, uh, our library. And we get to talk to Assistant Director Anna Litton about what's coming up um, in the month of March, especially, but uh, just over what we can all look forward to over the next uh, over the next few weeks. Um, Anna, great to see you. You as well. You as well. It has been really, frankly, it's been too long uh, since we last got to check in with you, uh, especially given, of course, that the library has continued to be uh, the kind of vibrant community space that it usually is when we're all in person. Uh, I've noticed that the, the library's programs, uh, you know, the activity around the library doors as people are, you know, grabbing their materials, et cetera, it's all continuing quite a pace. Uh, yeah, it really is. We, um, I, uh, I'm just so grateful that I work with such uh, an amazing staff of people who've really come up with very creative ways to continue to provide amazing library services to the community. So working with Marie Cannon, our head of circulation, we've been able to devise a very safe and very, and essentially contactless way for people to get library materials. Um, we have seen huge numbers of library resources going out the door. We've actually been circulating in uh, the last full month that I have data for is January. We circulated more books in January, 2021 than we did in January, 2020. So people are really able to access uh, one of our core services materials. People are really able to find um, books and other library materials and being able to check them out and bring them home. So the gift that we are able to give the community is continuing to offer those great resources. I can attest to that myself because, you know, as we know, January and February are cold weather months. So I have been by to pick my own materials on multiple occasions and actually decided to come back later uh, because there were so many people yeah. uh, waiting and, and you know, the line was out into the cold. So uh, I, I definitely have had firsthand experience of the fact that, yeah, it doesn't surprise me to hear you guys are even busier in terms of material going out the door. Uh, yeah. Than been a year ago. Yeah, I um, we've offered the last time I was speaking with you, James, we were talking about our library grab bag service and that service has just taken off in such an amazing way. Um, it's so I, I can't tell you the joy that librarians feel in putting together those materials for people and the response from the community has been tremendous. People are so happy to get their grab bags and it's another great way that we found to um, while we are closed for browsing to offer some of that same kind of service to the community. And it's been just a real true delight to be able to provide that service. Yeah, I mean, very few examples as strong as, uh, as the Robbins Library really around seeing the opportunities uh, here in, in pandemic time. Um, and really taking advantage of those um, as best as possible. As you said, as we noted last time we were talking, uh, makes librarians just as happy as it does patrons. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, some, of these, some of these programs, that's for sure. Anyway, let's talk about what's coming up. I know that this is always a busy time in the library calendar every year because we are heading into March, which is traditionally community read time. Um, and I'll let you go ahead and explain, you know, what the program is generally and then what the community read is for this year. Yeah, absolutely. Arlington's Community Read Program, Arlington Reads Together, um, started in the early 2000s. And the program offers a way for the community to come together to learn, to read, to engage in a topic deeply. Um, the, there is a volunteer um, committee who selects the title uh, after nominations from the community. We get together over a number of meetings, uh, discuss and read many different titles and make one final selection. Um, this year, we were really, the, the committee itself was wonderful this year. We invited some new community members to that committee. We had two high school students who served on that committee, which was a real joy for me to bring in new voices, uh, different outlooks to that committee. And the committee chose a kind of classic book, Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? I'm looking at the 20th anniversary edition of this book now. So this book has been around for a while, but the 20th anniversary edition includes some a really great new updates, including a fantastic introduction. 
Um, the book is a little bit longer than some books that we often pick, but one of the great things about this book is I don't think you need to read the entire book to really get a lot out of the book. And so one of the things we've done for our community read program this year, our community read program always includes quite a bit of programming, uh, book discussion groups, as well as present uh, presentations from outside groups and many different types of ways that readers can get involved with that program. Um, our book groups this year include some uh, opportunities to discuss not the entire book, but a piece of the book. So our first book discussion, community book discussion, isn't a discussion just of the introduction, which is around 30 pages. It's not super long. Um, even if you're daunted by a lo long book during these times, these difficult trying times, you don't need to read the whole thing to get quite a bit of great information out of that title. So we're excited about that. And we have a fantastic lineup of programs as part of that schedule this year. Um, I'm holding up right now the brochure that's available in the library uh, for all of the events for this program. This is also available online, and I know we'll be sharing that information with viewers. Um, our, our featured event this year is an author visit with the author of this year's title, Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum. Uh, we are really excited to be partnering with the Arlington Educational Foundation for that event. She's going to be visiting the community on uh, Sunday, March 21st. That's the correct date. Sunday, March 21st, she'll be doing a Zoom presentation with the entire community. That's going to be a moderated uh, discussion. And I'm very, very excited about it. There's, she's, she gets rave reviews wherever she goes. And I think it's gonna be a great event. Um, we already have over 250 people signed up for that uh, presentation. So I'm sure it's gonna uh, be a packed house and a great, great presentation for everyone. So we're super excited about that event. Um, the other events throughout the month, there's, uh, again, you can flip through all of them here. Uh, we're launching with an event with True Story Theater, um, a local theater organization that does interactive programs that build on stories, which is perfect way for, I think, us to ease into this month of programming, um, a way to kind of bring some playfulness to thinking about identity, which is really the key theme of this year's uh, book and how we build our identities and how our identities impact how we see the world, lots of different pieces there. So that's going to be happening on um March 3rd. Um, other great events throughout the month. We are having um, a presentation with um, uh, Margaret Thomas from Arlington Public Schools. She's the METCO coordinator for the community. Um, for people who don't know, METCO is an uh, uh, opportunity for Boston resident students to participate in, to actually enroll as full-time students in suburban schools. And I'm really excited to hear more from her about the history and experience of being a METCO student, um, being participating in that program in Arlington. What is that experience like? We'll be hearing from Speak Out Boston, which is a queer speakers bureau for the Boston area about that kind of intersection of being um, a member of a community of color and a queer person. Like how, how do your identities work together there or work apart? How, what is that like? We are going to be having um, a conversation. Oh, and we're gonna be ending the month with a present a musical presentation um, from by Tim Hall. He's a Boston area musician who is, uh, does, both spoken word and jazz. And when I was first introduced to him, his themes of identity, his themes of masculinity just came through so beautifully through his performance. I really wanted to include him in the month. I like to have a little fun piece at the end of the month to send us off with a little bit of joy. And I think Tim's gonna bring that. Um, I hope that we all have the opportunity to learn something about our identities, um, what race means in our individual lives, and how we can learn to communicate with those who have different identities than we do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could go on and on uh, myself about this choice, um, but I'll leave it at this. I will say that it fits in very well with a uh, reckoning, a necessary reckoning happening on a national level, we hope. And certainly here in Arlington over these last couple of years, as we are well aware, uh, these are issues that need to be addressed and faced. Um, and that needs to happen in community and community conversation as difficult, as uncomfortable, 
uh, as it may need to be. Uh, and this is a wonderful vehicle for that. Secondly, I will just add that in my previous life, uh, as a high school teacher here in Boston, um, we were lucky enough to uh, read this book together as a community uh, in our school and have the author in for a couple of sessions following that uh, collective reading together. And uh, in my 20 plus years of, uh, uh, of being at that school, I have to say this was one of the most galvanizing, uh, powerful um, kind of sources of in, important conversation uh, that we encountered uh, in, in that whole time. So it promises uh, to just be rich uh, with possibility, I think, for the community. Congratulations to you and the committee for picking for making that kind of choice. Uh, and it certainly sounds like the surrounding programming is going to only enhance people's experience so i really hope so and i do really want to take a if i can take a brief moment i want to thank our partners in this whole project particularly uh the arlington libraries foundation which has been an important funder for this project for the past few years uh, their their deep commitment to helping us get great authors into the community is so fantastic and the arlington educational foundation for joining this year in particularly wanting to support uh this book choice for both the community and the school community as well and i'm really i just am so happy that these piece we've been able to bring these different groups together to provide this amazing program for everyone in arlington well i think it is crystal clear to people we're both very excited <laughs> exactly um, about this prospect but there's obviously other stuff to talk about as well uh, the library as we often mention is quite uh, the engine uh, for a number <laughs> of different programs um, and conversations in town so at at your leisure tell us uh, what else we have to look forward to yeah, one of the things that I've been really, this uh, January, February, March are such busy months here, but there, there's been a lot of joy in that busyness. And I think one of the new projects that we're taking on that I'm particularly excited about is uh, developing a collection. I've been working with uh, Jillian Harvey, the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion here for Arlington on building a project that um, we are calling Elevating Arlington's Voices of Color. Um, I think Jill described it so well when she said, uh, people of color are so often spoken about rather than given the space to speak. And we wanted to create a collection, a, a, a place where we can hold stories of people of color in our community, um, hear their stories directly, hear their experiences. So in creating this collection, we want to hold a memoir, we wanna hold uh, photos, we wanna hold any way that somebody wants to tell their story. Here's what my life, feels like and looks like looks like living as um, a black indigenous or person of color here in our community. So we're launching this collection with, a, actually it's ongoing right now, a writing series with a local writer, Lynette Benton, who's a longtime writing teacher. She's been leading a couple of workshops and we are hoping to, that some of the people who've been attending those will, uh, will submit their stories to our collection. Um, Jillian and I have been working on pulling some different photographers and some different artists in to help people figure out how to tell your story. That's one of the tough things. If, uh, if I just say to you, uh, I, want, I want your story for this collection, please tell your story. Giving people some tools to help them do that has also been one of the, the joys of this work so far. Um, we are taking submissions right now to that collection and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what we have so that we can help people understand the experiences of our neighbors. Um, again, another wonderful idea, and um, you know, w w one thing that particularly resonates for me in what you just said. Uh, no doubt that people that the voices of people of color need to be heard, um, not just and and not immediately responded to. Those right. of the rest of us need to take time and take that in rather than respond. And all too often, as you said, there's that that drowning out. Uh, as, or speaking for. And by establishing a collection or archive like this, you are enabling that process of us, the you know, those of us who need to be in the audience for this, taking the things in um, and again, processing those as we should. Yeah, it's been really exciting. And I just also have to say, it's uh, Lynette Benton who has 
been leading writing workshops for the library for many years. She was so excited to take on this project as well. And it's just another piece where I've just felt a lot of joy in working on this. That's great. Well, uh, I wish I could. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could overlay uh, the joy on 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 this next topic. But um, you know, we we've we've made passing reference so far to COVID, um, yeah. and of course, that is the world we continue to live in, uh, and and will be for some time to come. Um, my understanding is that you also are developing or or are in in the process of 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 having a kind of covid archive can you tell us about that yeah that's been another fantastic project that's been uh forming over this time period um our arlington's covid 19 archive is a place where we've been collecting photos some writing some videos many different pieces to help show for today and for years into the future what arlington looked like during this period um, that collection is available on our website for anyone to see or to contribute to. And I love it. I love looking at that collection. We have over a hundred different um, artifacts, essentially, photos, um, videos, stories, as I said, in that in that collection. And looking back on it, it's just already, we are almost a year into our COVID lives and looking back on it, it's just amazing how quickly we will we'll forget some of these pieces. One of the pieces that I um, was editing in the collection just recently was a story about the first day of public school in Arlington. I believe that was September 21st around there. And in this story, um, you know, there were the woman who posted it was talking about what we didn't know what school was going to be like, but we wanted kids to have this feeling of kind of excitement about going back to school. And I was just so glad to be able to capture that there. We're going to forget what that felt like. We're going to be like, oh, and school didn't start for so long that year. But remembering we still wanted to give kids that feeling of joy or looking back on it now, um, you don't remember when he started wearing a mask. We don't remember that anymore. It just is such part of our getting dressed in the morning is finding that mask. So it's interesting to see those kinds of earlier stories too about when, what was it like to get your first mask and stick that on? Yeah, I think it, it's, it, it's, it is amazing because of course we all are aware that there's nothing we wanna think about less right now uh, <laughs> than this world that we've been living in, in a lot of ways, right? And there's nothing that we long to escape uh, any more deeply than we do this. At the same time, you're absolutely right that we need that it is so important that as we're living through it, we are amassing the documentation of that for ourselves to look back on already and for uh, obviously for for pro posterity. Um, but yeah, what you were just saying reminded me of hearing on the radio just a few days ago, uh, one of the first reports um, from, you know, of the first case in Massachusetts. and. And of course, that was only a year ago, and right. um, and it's 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 a time that I lived through. It's not that long, and yet I just hearing that as an as a as an archival document um, really changed my perception of of listening to it and of of what it brought back for me, et cetera. Uh, so I can just imagine how the ripple effects of what. It, uh, of what you guys are amassing there uh, will will play out over years and decades to come. Yeah, and I, I really do hope that everybody, all of the viewers today, take a moment to go and take a look at that archive. It is, there are funny pieces in it. We've forgotten how funny it felt to be sitting in our house for so long back in March and April. It's just, a, it's, I think it's so valuable. And I hope that when people look at that archive, they're also a little bit inspired to look through um, their photos on their phone or go back to see some diary entries and think about what they could contribute to help us get a fuller understanding of what this period was like in Arlington, Massachusetts in 20 and 2021. Well, I'm so glad that you mentioned, you know, looking at the archive because uh, let me ask you, how does somebody look at the archive? Yeah, it's available through our website. So that's robinslibrary.org. And it's through our local history collection. There's a local history tab right there on the front page of our website. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see the Arlington's um, COVID-19 archive. It's right there, easy to access. There's a submit button once you see that as well. So if anyone has any in, uh, interest in submitting items, easy to do right from there as well. 
it's it's fun to take a look. I know you're right, James. Nobody wants to think about this anymore, but it is kind of interesting to look at some of these photos to think about what spring felt like during this time period. And you are so right. It feels like so long ago. And I think the, the earliest submission that we have is um, a photo of uh, Arlington's Health and Human Services Director, Christine Bongiorno, at a press conference about those early cases that we had here in Arlington. And it's just, it's amazing to think that happened a year ago and things, our world will never be the same. Yeah. And I have to say, it takes a librarian to look at that and appreciate all of it with the gusto that you <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is interesting and it's going to be interesting for people for so many years into the future mm -hmm. we are living through a historic time and i hope that we you know even though it's a, so difficult on so many levels um we do need to take a moment to remember this is we are living through history and to let that slip away would be a real loss Right. This is not going to be one of those times that just, you know, slips our mind or something, anything like that. That's for right. Sure. Right. Um, let me ask you um, if, you know, I have a I have a question for you, which I think the audience is going to be very, you know, curious about, which has to do with reopening um, and, you know, what the timeline might be, et cetera. But before we get to that, is there anything uh, that is on uh, the, the calendar coming coming up? Uh, that you want to share with people that we haven't talk, talked about yet? Uh, no, I think, you know, I encourage everyone to take a look at our events calendar. We have really been doing an amazing job, or I mean, I, I say we, I really mean my staff has been doing an amazing job of providing uh, great programs for the community throughout this entire time period. Um, I want to call out in particular, Michelle Marr, who runs the Plugged In Programming, that program series um, targets uh, people 55 and older, but really anyone is welcome. Michelle really saw this time period as the time when it might be better to increase programming, that there's people might have more time or be looking for more ways to feel engaged and connected to the community. Um, and I think that what she did of adding more programs to her calendar is so typical of how everyone at the library has thought about this time period. What can we provide to the community during a, a hard time um, and our events calendar, which is again located at robinslibrary.org slash events, it shows so many different ways for people to uh, learn something, connect to a different group, come to a new book group, come hear a presentation. The Friends of Robins Library have been putting on fantastic concerts every month. There's so many ways to help you to remind remind yourself that you are connected to a wonderful community of people. And I do hope that people take advantage of that right now. Love to hear that because, uh, you know, I, I, we feel at ACMI that we are really, we have some super close partnerships in town and that with the libraries is one of them. And I think part of the, you know, the real bedrock of that collaboration is our mutual commitment to just bringing connection to to town and enhancing community and looking for ways to do that, whatever the circumstances are uh, that we're living with and through. Um, well, we've really been lucky to partner with ACMI. ACMI has, you know, we've all been challenged to find new technology or use technology in new and different ways. And ACMI has been a fantastic partner in presenting, for example, the Friends of Library of Robbins Library concerts, both to Facebook pages and ACMI channels and really helping providing better ways to access things that are happening now. So let's just pause this whole programming right here and just, uh, I've got mine, you got, you, you go back and pat yourself. <laughs> exactly, <there. laughs> exactly, we're all doing a great job. We're doing the best we can. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we it, and, and it feels good. It feels good to be making the effort. Um, so let me, let me now ask you, um, you know, that, that, that question that is probably ever on people's minds because yeah. It has been, um, the library has been busy, has been a constant presence in our lives throughout the pandemic. But of course we can get only so far into, uh, into the doors. Um, and uh, people are anxious to know when and if uh, there's gonna be a possibility that they can spend time in the library. Yeah, we are really committed to finding, to first 
understanding the health context here in Arlington and in Massachusetts, and we are starting to see cases decrease, which brings me so much, I know brings me so much personal joy, so much joy as a member of this town, this state. It's great to see those numbers start to go down. Um, we are really looking at what services we can provide safely and how. Um, of course, the service that we get the most questions about is browsing services. People want to come in and be able to browse for books. So we are really carefully thinking about what we need to do in order to make those services safe for the community. That includes thinking about our occupancy rates, how many people can we have in the building, how can we let people know um, when it's safe to come in, um, how can we provide some of the other essential services that we know community members are looking for, technology services, many different pieces for visiting the library. So right now we are in the process of thinking about all of those pieces. Um, I cannot give you a date today when we will be opening for browsing or other services, but I hope everyone in the community knows that this is a true, um, Staff have such a desire to be able to figure out safe ways to open up and provide some of those services, or I should say open up more. People do come into the library every day right now to pick up their materials, but they're not really coming very far into the building. So we're having meetings with all of our department heads. We are making sure that we are able to do what we need to do safely. We're thinking about what's happening in other communities and building a model that will work for Arlington that will be safe and sustainable for community members and staff and keep everyone um, safe and make sure that people are getting the services that they, they really need and deserve. Yeah, it may be self-evident, but I think we need to acknowledge that there are, you know, that the biggest things are outside of your control um and uh that you're you're doing your best to figure it out but it does sound like we all need to understand that it, it is probably going to be a gradated uh re-entry into the library uh for us as a community in other words there's going to be smaller steps before those doors are open wide as they were uh you know back in oh the halcyon days of right <laughs> right exactly and as now people are first we only had contactless pickup and then we opened up to being able to come into the library lobby to pick up your items which is much easier we are looking at those great gradations to make it to provide services as safely as we can making sure we're doing that in a way that's really going to work all right well needless to say we look forward to that but we've got plenty of to look forward with what you've discussed today we've got plenty to look forward to even before we get to that point um, i hope so yeah it's been great to talk to you um, let's make sure that we don't let too much time go by before our next update um, i'm sure we will have plenty to talk about then no matter how soon it comes absolutely um, I have been speaking to Assistant Library Director Anna Litton about upcoming programs at the Robbins Library. Uh, it is Talk of the Town that you've been watching and this library update. Anna, thanks again for joining us. And to you out there, we appreciate your being here and we'll see you next time. I'm James Milan. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.